So hi, this is Teddy Burris of Burris Consulting Incorporated, your social media strategist, consultant, coach, and trainer. The video I'm going creating right now is how to engage on LinkedIn. And le- engaging on LinkedIn is the third piece of the deliberate activities you need to be doing on LinkedIn to be able to get business value from LinkedIn. And in previous conversations and in my webinars and seminars, I teach you how to present, which is how to build a professional LinkedIn profile, keyword rich profile that can be discovered and that presents who you are and what you do. The second piece of the puzzle for creating business value of LinkedIn is how to connect, how to find people, how to do research, and how to connect with people in a relevant and broad way on LinkedIn. This video is all about engaging on LinkedIn. And there's lots of different areas that we can engage on LinkedIn. I'm gonna show you seven primary ways that you can engage on LinkedIn so that you can nurture and develop the relationship you have with your LinkedIn network. Which again, this is probably the most critical of the three activities on LinkedIn, but it does take all three, present, connect, and engage. So let me show you step one. Step one is pretty easy. I use LinkedIn messaging a lot. And the way you use LinkedIn messaging, go home. And it's right here. It's uh, messages. So I can go to messages on LinkedIn. And I get uh, a lot of email, a lot of LinkedIn messages in and out. And it's a great way to engage with my network when I uh, want to reach out to somebody in my LinkedIn network who is a first level connection, then often I'll just go do a new message and I'll, and I'll type in the gentleman's name. I use my buddy Randy Wooden as an example and bring him up. And just like an email, you know, uh, what is my, you know, what's the message about? Always put a subject line, please. It's really disrespectful to people to send them an email or a LinkedIn message of no subject. Uh, no subject line and then be very succinct and specific in your message clear concise specific um, and not long-winded um, really this is a great way to engage your network but don't overdo it don't send uh, almanacs or chapters of text in a LinkedIn message short clear concise specific messages Again, it's a great way. And, and LinkedIn, as of uh, about three or four months ago, added the ability to attach files. So I can, just like in any other messaging system, I can attach a, a PDF, a document, a spreadsheet, uh, an image, lots of other things. Just pulling it from your computer. LinkedIn messaging. I'm going to cancel this. LinkedIn messaging is a great way to engage with your LinkedIn network. network. Again, being specific, clear, concise uh, with your messages. The second way to engage on content is through the timeline or what's or the news feed and the news feed is content that scrolls across and down through the home page of my LinkedIn uh, uh, my home page on, my, on LinkedIn so I'm often gonna look for content that my network shared or created and if I find content that my network shared or created then that's the kind of content I want to engage on because I'm I'm engaging on my network's content, not some other person's content. Example, Christina liked this article from somewhere else, so that may not be her article, so I may not engage on that. It's not her article. But my buddy Bob McIntosh shared an article directly, and that is a content that I want to engage on because it is Bob McIntosh sharing that content. Before I engage on content on the home page, I'm going to read it. I see that uh, you know Stephanie Scordis uh, shared an article, uh, how to keep work housekeeping from taking over your life. And if that was an article that was relevant to me, I may go to it. Let me show you what I would do. Let's assume it's relevant for the sake of this video. So I go read that article. It's a Fast Company article, how to keep work housekeeping from taking over your life. This is probably about people working from home. And so anytime I'm going to engage on content, I'm going to at least skim through it, if not read it completely. 
so that I know exactly what the article is all about. I generally don't comment on content on the the home page on the website's page, this case by this company. I generally will read it, and then I'll close it, and then I'll go comment here on LinkedIn. So if I appreciate the article, I may say I liked it just by, and that to me basically says I appreciate that Stephanie shared it. If I want to engage on it further, I may comment and I may start off by thanking Stephanie for sharing it and then reference a piece of the content that I read that is of interest to me or thought provoking or that I want to challenge in some way or another that I may disagree with. Now, if I disagree with any content on link that I read on LinkedIn, I'm not going to say I disagree without having some fact to back up why I disagree with it. So I'm going to get some other content, another article, or link to something that shows that may not be accurate. Again, it is absolutely acceptable and even appropriate for you to disagree with content you read online. However, you cannot just disagree. You can't say it's wrong, you can't say it's incorrect or useless or whatever word you want to use without supporting your uh, your point of view with some other content that backs it up. The powerful way to engage with people is to point out an error in an article with supporting content. So I may comment on it again with some uh, accepting statement, uh, some add-on statement uh, in some respect or another. And, um, and, st- and this is what our networks are looking for, people to engage in our content. The third way to engage on content on the homepage under like, comment, share is to use the share button. Now, when I hit the share button, I'm going to show you something that happens pretty much anywhere you are on the internet as well as within LinkedIn. The share button in uh, or the LinkedIn share button works pretty much exactly the same way no matter where you find the LinkedIn share button. It's always going to have what's called the title. It's always going to have the excerpt. Uh, it's going to give you the ability to share it in, on as an update, which will be on the home page news feed. Um, it'll give you the ability to share it within groups or send it directly to individuals. Any time you share content on LinkedIn, you must write an editorial. An editorial is in here where you tell the viewer or the reader, why did you share this? You must tell your network why you're sharing an article. What did you find interesting about it? What did you find thought-provoking about it? How can it help others in your network? Uh, How did it entertain you, excite you, engage you? You must tell the readers why you're sharing content. That's an absolute priority for you to build uh, trust and respect in a relationship with your network. The other thing you have the the ability to do more often than not in the share feature of uh, LinkedIn sharing is to edit the the headline or the title and the excerpt. Now, anytime you edit the title or the excerpt, do not deviate the message. What you can do is take out content or words or phrases that are in primarily in the excerpt here that are not supportive or relevant to the article. You'll find that periodically some websites will have lots of content in there about the website, and so they, they literally uh, dilute the value of the edit, excuse me of this excerpt by putting all this content about where it came from. I understand why they do that. My opinion, it takes away from the message. Again, always put an editorial. One other thing you can do is if you have Twitter connected to your profile, then you can say, I want to tweet this as well. It'll keep track of how many letters you use. And, uh, and that's a great way to uh, create more reach. I can also post to groups. The interesting thing about posting to groups when you're sharing content is I don't need to remember the entire group name. I can type NC and find NC Wiseman. I can type ATD and I can find ATD International. I can type in F and find RLP and find professionals. These are different groups that I'm in. So you can share this content into groups. Um, and uh, it's another, again another great way to uh, engage with your network by sharing content. Again, anytime you share content, you, you actually have to put a title. So I usually use the title field to write my editorial. Why am I sharing it? Because I have the title up here. And then sometimes I write a little bit, maybe a little bit detailed, more details about what 
uh, or why I am sharing this. Always have an editorial. And if you have a detail box, you have the ability, maybe to a call to action, a challenge, thought-provoking question about that article. The last thing you can do when you use LinkedIn Share is you can send it directly to an individual. So I can type an individual's name. I can type in, my, again, my, my buddy Randy Wooden, W-O-D-E-N. <clears throat> and this takes, the bigger your network is, the longer it takes for this to pop up. There he is there. I can send it to multiple people. So I can send it to my uh, my friend Sandy Jolly, J-O-L, and um, so, and, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, I always change the subject. You know, interesting article about uh, work housekeeping and then maybe my message I again I always change this love to hear what you think about this idea always change the subject when you send it to an individual always change the message you know maybe I'll just end it with Teddy last thing I do if I'm sending it to multiple people if they're not connected on LinkedIn or not relevant to each other on LinkedIn I will um, click that which does not allow uh, Sandy and Randy to see each other's names and email addresses in this message. Bottom line, sharing on a LinkedIn sharing button. Share an update on your news feed. Share directly in your group. Send directly to individuals. Again, always put an editorial. Why are you sharing this? So again, from the homepage news feed, anytime you find content that your network shares, it's interesting and, and or of relevant to you, relevance to you, then you can use the uh, the uh, the like, which means I appreciate you sharing it. The comment, throw out some insights or uh, or supporting uh, conversation or challenging conversation with supporting text or, or content and or share. Great way to engage your network on the uh, homepage of LinkedIn. The third primary area for you to engage on LinkedIn is in groups. And I really encourage you to get involved in groups that are relevant to who you are and of interest to you. And here's a group that I'm in. It's a, a small group just getting started. And it's a, it is about talent development. It is all about what I do. So in a group, I can start a discussion can put a title and then you know write a simple discussion and and get my network engaged the title can only be 200 characters long but the details can be uh way more than 200 i'm not sure the exact number be interesting to know i might look for that one day but 200 for a title is a lot of characters and then write my discussion a challenge a question a thought-provoking idea i can also uh, post a hyperlink if i want to uh in a discussion and so i can just do that and there's the url and uh, when it resolves, it should bring up the, hopefully it brings up the image and it brings up the title and the excerpt. And so now once I redo that, I can get rid of this and I can write my editorial here. What do you think of these resources? And then I can have more details here about why am I posting this if I want to. And I generally suggest you save something. And then I can post that in groups. You want to be deliberate. Am I posting it for general? Is it a job opening or is it a promotion of a business? And uh, that's called being polite when you make that decision appropriately. Just a great way to engage in my network just by, again, posting a thought-provoking content or a link to some interesting information that you found uh, online somewhere. Go back to my group. And so beyond starting a discussion, again, another great way it is in, to engage directly on the content that the, the members of this group share. And so uh, Yvonne, Yvonne wrote an article about, uh, subscri uh, about mastering the work product. So if that's something that's relevant to me, I may go read the article. Once I read it, I may comment and or, and, or like it. Uh, you can't share content that's in a group outside of a group, which is why the share button is not there. In a group is a great way to engage on content, share content. I call it contribute and collaborate. It's a great way. Another interesting uh, way to engage in LinkedIn groups is to engage directly with members. And we all know that we can send a message uh, just through regular messaging on LinkedIn to our first level connections. What many people don't know is that you can also, within a group, send a message 
directly to any member of that group without having to be a first level connection. Here's a second level, le second level connection of mine. I can send her a message. I can only get that button when I'm looking at the members under the group. So I can't uh, from anywhere else in LinkedIn send a message. I can only send a message to Stephanie when I'm in the group and looking at her in the list. But I can send her a message just like any other message. I can also connect with her as well. That's another conversation. So again, discuss in groups, discussions, start a discussion, collaborate on discussions, comment and like on content, and get, and then also send messages to members. The other area to, to engage on LinkedIn, which is my, my fourth and uh, primary one in the big list, is go to companies. So I can go to companies that I'm following. And if I really want to know what's going on with uh, Robert Half or uh, let's even Dale Carnegie, one of my favorite uh, companies there. And if Dale Carnegie, which is a you know, company that I like, I've got a bunch of first level connections or good people. If they shared some content that's of interest to me and or relevant to me from the company page, I can like it, which says thank you. I can com on it, comment on it and create some uh, conversation of, around that article on their from their company page and I can also share it outside of their company page great way to help your network is to find the content they share on the company pages and when you share it you're sharing it back on the news feed great way to help your network and to engage of your network company pages go back home the uh, next area that I want to share uh, show you is a, a little feature that many people don't know it's called tagging from the share and update, I can engage directly with my network here. I can absolutely, it's called tagging people. Uh, I had a great time today with my friends. Now watch this. This is the magic I want to show you. Friends at, so I can tag at Goodwill North and there's Goodwill Industries of Northwest North Carolina. I can tag a company in a post now not only that i had a great time with my friends at Nor goodwill and i can do a period and then i can also do this uh good to see at randy wooden there's mr randy wooden a friend of mine Com now because randy is a friend of mine i can get rid of the last name good to see randy at uh, uh sandy uh sandy jolly is a friend of mine i can get rid of her, her uh, uh last name as well so I can tag in a status update and in a comment from the homepage newsfeed. I can tag companies and individuals. A great way to engage your network, but be very deliberate and make sure that when you're tagging people, you're tagging people for very relevant and appropriate reasons. Don't tag people just for the sake of tagging people. This happens in Facebook. We don't need to do that on LinkedIn as well. By the way, you can only tag from the homepage. You cannot tag within groups, unfortunately, right now. Uh, again, tagging individuals on content. I could post an article, and there's the article, and then I can come back here and go, what do you think of this article at Randy? And then tag Randy Wooden. Oop. And I can tag him and, and let him know I shared an article that I'd love to have his opinion about. Tagging on LinkedIn from the homepage in the, in the news feed is a powerful way to engage with your network. The sixth primary way I have on my list for engaging with people on LinkedIn is under what's called LinkedIn's people you, excuse me, under LinkedIn's keep in touch. Now, keep in touch shows up over here. Uh, and it'll go up as high as 15 people to keep in touch with. I've already um, worked that list, so that's why it went away. The other place you can, and so it, when it goes away, it reverts to people you may know. But it's also under connections, keep in touch. From the menu, connections, keep in touch. So here's my connections, but if I wait a moment, it's going to bring up this keep in touch area here. So it tells me Terry Taylor has a new job, David Van Pelton has a new job, et cetera, et cetera, has a birthday, birthday, new job. And then Edwards, uh, uh, Stephen Edwards' birthday. And then I can go down here and say, see more. It'll bring up more. And I can say, yeah, there's Rick Strickland's birthday and Tucker Thorpe's birthday, see more. And I can see, okay, Rhonda has a work anniversary. I generally do not engage 
from this page with my network in the keep in touch area what i generally do is i'll right click on that so i can stay here open in a new tab and then i can from that tab i can go actually go look two years at megaforce i'll go down to her profile and go yep she was somewhere else the 13th yes so it is two years and now i will send her a message and when i send her a message you know it's generally as simple as this Depend upon my relationship with her, the words will change. Depend upon the milestone, if it's 20 years, might say a little bit more. Or what is the, the reason I'm engaging with her in regards to this keep in touch. And that may be the message I would send to her. That is the message. And then I can close this tab and I can come back over here and see that my buddy Gerald Crisco's 34 year anniversary at the Bud Group. And so I could engage with him, which I'm gonna do later at another time. And then, uh, so I could also you know, skip that It'll bring up another one. I can go over here and skip this one. It'll bring up another one. Skip this one. It'll bring up another one. And then I can say, oh, look, Jeff Johnson's a work anniversary. Again, I'm going to right click, go to his profile in another tab, view his tote profile, make sure it is 16 years of Fidelity Bank. So I'll scroll down here, and sure enough, I can see he was at First Union 16 years of Fidelity Bank. And then I'll go up here and send a message. Sometimes I'll do say congrats. Sometimes I'll go straight to my own message that I can talk to him directly. Again, engaging with your network through the LinkedIn connections, keep in touch, is a powerful way to engage your network. And, and stay top of mind. Let them know you care enough about them to say hello. The last way I want to show you how to engage with your network on LinkedIn is a little different. It's all about taking my virtual or social media connections or network and taking it IRL in real life. Often what I'll do is I'm traveling the country. I'm going to look and see who in my network is in, a, in the town I'm traveling into or even traveling through so that when I get into that town, I could possibly have a cup of coffee, maybe a phone call, go to their office, do lunch or whatever is appropriate and relevant to my relationship with that network. So the way I do that is I'll go look at my connections. And when I'm in my connections, I will go down here and say filter by location and when I filter my location, then I can say, you know, I want to find somebody who is in, let's go with, uh, is in uh, San, uh, San Francisco. And so I can see that, uh, you know, here's the list of people who are in San Francisco. It's a fairly finite list, about eight or ten people. And I have not seen Blair A.B. in a while, so he may be somebody I reach out to and say, Blair, I'm going to be in San Francisco on this time frame. I would love to say hello to you, maybe have a cup of coffee, or Kurt Schraver, or my buddy Neil Myers, uh, or Jeff Urban. A great way to engage with your network is to take it in real life. And often I don't even make it as grandiose as that. Often I'll just say, you know, I'm going to be in Greensboro, so I'll go to my network and I'll just look and see uh, who's in Greensboro, and I'll say, you know, I haven't talked to Beth Massey in a while. So I'll go to Beth Massey's profile. She's in Winston-Salem. I know she's also in Greensboro. And I'll send her a message to say, Hey, Beth, I'm going to be in Greensboro on the 15th. Love to have coffee with you if you're available. Any way I can take my virtual network on LinkedIn and make it in real life, I try to do that. It's a great way to engage with my network. And actually, I have a bonus for you. Bonus num uh, point number eight. Point number eight is to uh, contact uh, via phone. Often what I do when I get a new network connection, uh, you can see I just connected with Beth Ireland. And so, uh, often when relevant, when appropriate, uh, I will actually contact. So she has her phone number there. She's publishing her phone number for me to find. I will call Beth up and say hello. Thank her for the connection and ask her what she's doing. I give her, get, ask her for five minutes of her time. Be very appreciative, make the conversation all about Beth, and get her to share with me a little bit about who she is and what she does. That's my Dale Carnegie principles, make the conversation all about the other person, and that will get, ultimately will give me permission, when she uh, does give me permission, to tell her a little bit about me. And if there's, a, if there's a relationship to grow, if there's an opportunity to help each other, then we will work on that. Again, when I can make my um, LinkedIn network go IRL, either by meeting them in real life over coffee, sweet tea, or soda 30, or just call them up and say hello, I will do that. 
So in, a, uh, in summary, there are lots of ways uh, today and probably lots of new ways in the future for us to engage with our LinkedIn network. The first is to simply send them messages. The second way to engage with our LinkedIn network is the, from the home page or the news feed, like, comment, and share uh, the content that our, our network puts out there, as well as share our own content, whether it's uh, share an update, up to upload a photo, or write a long form post, which is another conversation for another day. Third way to engage with our network is through groups. So engage on groups relevant to the, what the group is all about. Fourth way is to engage with our network on their company pages and on the content they put on their company pages. We can engage on it, like, comment, and we can even share their content further for them to help them out. Fifth way to engage with people uh, on LinkedIn is either through an update to tag them, tag their company, uh, where relevant, where appropriate. I can also comment on the LinkedIn news feed or home, uh, and, and tag individuals and tag companies there. The sixth way that we discussed about engaging with our network on LinkedIn is to use the keep in touch option, which is up here under connections, keep in touch. Often it's over here on the right as well. And for us to, you know, congratulate people on uh, work anniversaries, new jobs, successes, as well as the, even uh, where appropriate and relevant their birthdays. The seventh way to engage with our network on uh, LinkedIn network is to take it IRL. So if you're going to go into a city or a country and it, go find people who you are connected to who are in that those cities or regions and, and offer to have coffee, soda, sweet tea, or, or some uh, gathering with them. The eighth opportunity for engaging with our network on LinkedIn is to contact them directly. And I often do that with my new LinkedIn connections. It's a great way to engage our network. And again, the value from LinkedIn happens when you build a profile that clearly says who am I and what I do. When you build a network that's relevant to who you are and what you're all about in a broad sense. And when you, third, you engage with your network so they see who you are, understand who you are, and, and understand your value and you know, the, your perspectives, uh, your ideas, and what you have to offer. So I'm Teddy Burris. Company is Burris Consulting Incorporated. I am your social media strategist, consultant, trainer, and coach. Thank you for letting me share with you the LinkedIn engaging video.